Thank you. Well, thank you. 1919, exactly one century and two months ago on this very day, one of the greatest Australian films, The um, Sentimental Bloke, was shown to the public for the first time. It was based on the story um, by C.J. Dennis, and it was directed by Ray Raymond Longford. Lottie Lyle not only played the leading role, the leading female role, but she also wrote the screenplay and she edited the film. They had an amazing and very, very prolific partnership, which ended when Lottie died from tuberculosis at the age of 35. Australian cinema, um, by the way, she was also the first recognised Australian movie star back, back a century ago. OK, Australian, Australian cinema owes them a great debt of gratitude. As they do, the recipient of this award tonight, Sam Neill. Now, it's... Now, I know we're obliged to say nice things about him, but with Sam, it's impossible to do otherwise. He's often described as elegant, and when he gets on the stage, you'll see he'll make us all look rather shabby. But he, that's the one thing I do admire in him. Not only his elegance of spirit, but the elegance of his mind. He, he's, when he's thinking, is always considered and often quite dazzling. He seems to master absolutely everything he cares to turn his hand to. Besides all that, he's adored. Women adore him, he's adored by men, the good, the bad, and those of us in between. Everybody loves Sam. And you don't have to take my word for it, just look at this. Good evening, everyone, and I'm sorry I can't be there with you tonight to honour a man that I've known and worked with for over 40 years. A man christened Nigel John Dermot Neal. Nigel was born in Northern Ireland and moved to New Zealand at the tender age of seven. He was a shy kid and had a bad stutter. Couldn't have been less likely to become a movie star. But he started drama classes and it gave him confidence and wisely, around then, he changed his name to Sam. And then, at the age of 30, he moved to Australia to give it a go. His big break came in 1979 when Gillian Armstrong cast him as the charming, romantic lead in my brilliant career, which became an Aussie classic and a self-fulfilling prophecy. You're uh, new here, aren't you? Do you work in the kitchen? I'd be obliged to you, sir, if you'd take yourself out of the way. Unless you want me foot in your big, fat face. It was so obvious you were going to be a star without your wonderful Harry. There'd be no brilliant careers. Sam's brilliant career in film and television has now spanned four decades, and you've worked in over 60 countries, mate. For a somewhat late bloomer, the roles that you've played have shown true craftsmanship and a broad range. Playing the Antichrist Damien in The Omen. For every day that he lives and grows, my force will weaken. A man of the cloth who believes he's a reincarnated dog in Dean Span. One could wish to possess the olfactory powers of the canine. <laughs> Cat burglar in The Simpsons. Homer, old chap, well done. If anyone was going to catch me, I'm glad it was you. Paleontologist in Jurassic Park. Keep absolutely still. Especially it's based on movement. <laughs> and a particularly sinister Northern Irish detective in Peaky Blinders. We will discuss our business on Sunday and at the place that has already been determined. Sam, you big old legend. Uh, congratulations from your old pal, Kill, and all of us at Peaky Blinders. Fair play to you. Keep on trucking. Actually, Sam's accent was very, very good, by the way. <laughs> it was a really good Belfast accent. I know that Sam is particularly proud of his Australian work. He's made over 30 movies here. Who's this Ray Hart? Do you know him? No. No, I don't know. 
the truth. You are such a generous, uh, kind, thoughtful, um, insecure, mostly modest, and totally hilarious human being. And we all love you. The really talented actors are the ones you don't catch acting. You don't see the wheels going round. He's almost too good to notice, but um, the Australian Academy has noticed, and I've noticed, and so he's being given this award. I am here to say I got to work with you when I was a babe in the woods. May just do as I say, please. OK. You were always the most incredible guide and mentor and friend. You're obviously quite good at acting, worked with you a few times. They don't make gentlemen like you anymore. I wish they did. And a performance that I've always loved, playing Michael Chamberlain alongside Meryl Streep in Evil Angels. How could he take her? I thought I knew the answer, but I don't! I don't! True story, and this one's a pip. He nipped over to give me a tip on the fine points of strine, which eluded my mind and was uh, causing my accent to trip. He said, an orca says air conditioner, but a Kiwi says air conditioner. And thanks to this man, I won Best Actress at Cannes. <laughs> but for our partnership, it was the finisher. Here's the truth. You love what you do. You're damn fine at it. You love who you do it with and for. And I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure they all love you back, and that includes me. So you keep kicking goals, Sam. I love you, buddy. So, Sam, a heartfelt congratulations. After four decades of work, you're bigger than ever, mate. Congratulations, Sam. Congratulations. Congratulations, Sam. Well done, mate. Well deserved. Have a great night. Have a fantastic evening. Congratulations. I love you. You know, I'm not just a mate, but I'm an admirer. It's a great thing to be able to say about someone that you dearly love. So good night, mate. Have a great night. Over to you, George. Everybody, please welcome Sam to the stage. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, George Miller, great director, failed doctor. <laughs> I, I'm really deeply honoured and and um, and very touched to to um, be awarded this, um, the Longford Lyle Award, especially given when you look at the names that um, came before me. Uh, and in fact, uh, I was more than surprised to be asked by this night kept asking the organizers if they'd made a mistake, um, that maybe they'd got me confused with someone else, Hugo Weaving or someone like that. <laughs> but no, it turned out to be me, so I'm really pleased and chuffed. I, 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 I was thinking I was, I'd prefer if it was called the, Lyle, um, uh, the Longford Lyle Halfway There Award because it sounds, you know, the lifetime thing sounds a little, I don't know, terminal. <laughs> um, and I'm, I hope they don't mean it's the end because <clears throat> I'm not done, you know. I, I, uh, I'd still like to put a few more runs on the board. Um, but, it, you know, it's very surprising to find myself here in front of you, my colleagues and my friends from the film and television industry of Australia. And it's true because I, 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 when you talk about lifetime, I have been around for quite a long time, and if you include the years 
um, where I was making documentaries and smoking dope behind the um, garage at the New Zealand National Film Unit. <laughs> but they were wasted years. Um, I've, I've been in the business almost 50 years. It seems ridiculous. Um, so I, th I think, um, you know, obviously uh, this is the time to thank a few people. And I think the people, um, Brian, that idiot Brian uh, referred to it before. Um, I think there's two people that I'd like to thank most of all tonight because um, they really changed my life in a way they probably didn't expect. Uh, Margaret Fink and Gillian Armstrong asked me to come to Australia to, to make a film. The film turned out to be my brilliant career. And uh, it was while I was making that film that I really fell in love with this country, with its actors, with its uh, crew, with its, with its crews, with its um, caterers, with its landscape, and with its people. And I've, I feel the same way today as I felt then. I, I, I really love working and, and being in Australia. And I love Australians as well. And I, I continue to be immensely grateful for the opportunity to work here. And, and, um, and the generosity that Australia has shown me for no really good reason. Uh, I, I got here at a really exciting time. Um, <coughs> Australia was really pumping. It was 1978, and Australian writing and painting and, 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 and music were peaking. Rock and roll was everywhere. Sydney was still open. Uh, 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 <laughs> And, and uh, uh, filmmakers were, were people like Peter Weir and Fred Skepsey, Bruce Beresford, and my dear friend George Miller, thank you, George, for introducing me, were, were breaking um, astonishing new ground. And uh, I, it was really exciting to be part of that wave in some small way. Uh, Forty years later, last week, I saw a couple of Australian films, uh, which really assured me, reassured me that that same drive and energy are alive and well in Australia. Uh, one was Ride Like a Girl. Uh, it was the first time I'd seen it. Uh, it turned out I was, I was in it. Uh, and um, at least I, I, th I think it was me. Um, might have been Hugo. Uh, and I, I saw Judy and Punch. Uh, which is a really terrific film. And I, I wasn't in that, I'm fairly sure, although I'm, I'm looking a lot more like um, Terry Norris these days <laughs> than I used to. Uh, both films were really entertaining. One was unashamedly a crowd pleaser, uh, and none the worse for that, and the other one was unashamedly something like a, a brain teaser or a, a pleaser or something like that. But they're both terrific, and more importantly, they're about women and, and uh, by women, and they're about something. Looking back over this uh, uh, long, long lifetime, <laughs> uh, I think really the, the thing that about being in, uh, uh, in, in the business here are the, are the friendships that I've made. So many friendships that have meant so much to me. Um, people have been with me through the best times and the darkest times. And I, I thought I'd just, you know, a little random list of people I'd just like to acknowledge now. And if you're not on that list, please don't be offended because actually they're mostly idiots and, <laughs> and I love you more, you know. <laughs> but um, here are some. Um, the late John Clark, who was, who was a great friend, and a sort of genius, and I loved him very much. I never told him that, of course, you never do, um, but I miss him every day. Uh, the late Bill Shanahan, who was my agent and was agent to one or two others here tonight. Um, Margaret Fink, when I was going to do that film, said, you're gonna need an agent, and I said, okay. So she sent me to Bill, and I walked up his stairs, and I walked into his office, and I said, Hello, my name is Sam Neill, and I am told I need an agent. What is an agent? And Bill, who was the sweetest man who ever walked the planet, said, uh, 
Sam will look after you. And he did that until the day he died. Um, and I remember him with greatest affection. And now Anne Churchill Brown um, looks after me in the same way my agent now, who succeeded at Shanahan's. A um, few others. Rob Sitch and Jane Kennedy, who, uh, I don't know why I'm mentioning them, they, they were just such fun on the, on the dish, and we've had so much fun ever since. They, they really brighten up your day. I want to acknowledge um, Warwick Thornton, Wayne Blair, Ernie Dingo, Hamilton Morris, and dear old Tommy Lewis, who um, all in their own way extended the hand of friendship to me and welcomed me to country, to their country. And that's meant an awful lot to me. Uh, I want to um, remember the late Wendy Hughes. And some of you will remember her. I thought she was the most beautiful woman who ever graced the screen in Australia. And she was always, and, and she was also a really a beautiful soul. Until she got drunk, and, and at that time I would do a runner. <laughs> um, I want to. Uh, um, just a mention to David Wenham and um, Hugo Weaving, who have been great allies to me. They sort of get it. I want to especially thank Hugo for uh, doubling for me in some of my greatest hits. <laughs> like the Lord of the Rings and The Matrix. <laughs> he really took a load off, you know. <laughs> uh, I, I want to acknowledge Fred Skepsi, great old friend and a titan of Australian cinema. Um, and finally, um, I, I should probably mention Brian Brown <laughs> through gritted teeth. Uh, he's, um, ever since I've known him, he's, he's treated me like, like a brother, albeit a sort of idiot younger brother. <laughs> it's a, a thick younger brother, because he's six months older than me. But I want to tell Brian something. I've got news for you, buddy. I am thicker than you. No, um, you. All right, we'll just leave that. Uh, Brian Brown. Um, now, finally, um, strangely and really weirdly, um, this is actually the third uh, lifetime award I've been given in three months. <laughs> <clears throat> I got one in Spain a couple of months ago, I got one in New Zealand last month, and now tonight the wonderful Longford Lyle Award, and I'm beginning to think perhaps the universe is trying to tell me something. <laughs> uh, perhaps they know something that I don't know. Perhaps this is terminal, and I'd like to think it's not because I want many more years of pleasure with all of you. So thanks very much for this great honor that you've, that you've given me. But I would like to say finally, if this is terminal, it's been great to know you. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>